this video is a, a short continuation and follow-up on the video I did on plastic chemicals and their uh, role in causing uh, infertility. And um, I mentioned a bit about that there's not a lot of regulation and um, I looked this up again and there had been some, as, at least as it comes to children's toys, so plastic toys that children put in their mouths, because we know that the way that, you know, these phthalates mostly um, and also the bisphenols, as they enter our system, a lot of it is through food, but also through exposure by um, children chewing on plastic toys. So in 19, sorry, in 2008, they did uh, ban a, a few of these, actually uh, just three of them, that they found kind of were at the main source of issues. Because we, we know these are endocrine disruptors, right? Endocrine disruptors meaning they're really messing with our hormones. And especially in developing children, this is a big issue. It can really impact their uh, fertility later in life. And it can also impact, of course, the fertility, the fertility of, um, of grown-ups. That's a big issue. And the most dangerous and important one, and I mentioned this last time, is the consumption of um, these uh, phthalates, phthalates and bisphenols from plastics leaking into the food and then being consumed by pregnant women. Because as the baby develops, that is the biggest impact these have on actually organ or, or organs, specifically on the reproductive organs. And so the developing baby can really be, the development can be changed negatively, significantly by these um, phthalates and bisphenols. And if you know someone who's pregnant or who's uh, trying to conceive right now, maybe share this video with them and tell them this is a very important time for you to be very mindful not to consume things that are, you know, uh, in plastic containers or Starbucks cups or you know anything that you're heating in a plastic cup that's a bad idea right now because as the baby develops these chemicals really change the development of your baby and so this is an important thing that i wish that um you know our medical authorities would you know give it a bit more um credence and, and really help us a bit more uh pushing to understand that in pregnancy you shouldn't use these 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 plastics and how dangerous they are but anyway so the um Consumer Product Safety and Improvement Act 2008 banned three of them. That is DEHP, DBP, and BBP. And these were the ones that were studied early on, shown to have these uh, issues of being, an, of being endocrine disruptors. And they said, look, let's not put these in children's toys anymore. I mean, look, that's a, that's a great step. But the problem is, and, and, and I looked at, in, in detail into this, all plastics have some of these phthalates and bisphenols in them. And the bisphenol, the one that we mostly know is, for example, BPA. And we know now there's BPA-free drinking bottles, for example. But if they don't use BPA, then they use BPS or, or, or BPF. There's others and they haven't been studied as well, but it looks like they might be even worse or at least as bad. So we're replacing one bad thing with another bad thing. And to me, it's really all just about uh, making the industry look good and saying, oh, we're doing something, you know, look, we're, we're changing something and we're advertising, we're taking the bad thing out. But in the end, you're still consuming things that are horrible for you. So no matter how you slice it, it seems like, you know, plastics will always have some of these chemicals because these chemicals are important that, uh, you know, to form the plastic in a certain shape. And for example, if, there's, if they make a clear bottle, they have to use something to make that happen. So they, they need it to make the plastic malleable and to make it into the shapes that we then can use in our drinking cups. So anyway, DEHP, DBP, and BBP were banned in children's toys. Now, not in you know, other products, but in children's toys. And fine, good step. Um, and then later in 2018, they added uh, another five, and DINP, DIBP, DPENP, you know, and, and so on. So again, another five, but guess what? They use replacement for that as well because they had to, because they cannot work with plastic unless some of these chemicals are in there. So um, we know this from studies. And the interesting thing is all these um, phthalates uh, are excreted in urine. So that's kind of, they get metabolized in our body. They cause damage in our body and get excreted mostly via urine, but also via feces and via sweat. So some studies showed that. And I want to link a couple of studies if you're interested where it shows about the excretion of these and also about um, over a, a time period. Uh, so they've, um, they looked at it from 2009 to 2017 about concentrations on some of these in, in urine. So it's interesting to see what the shifts were. 
Um, so anyway, so, so they are present in, in most things. And even though they changed to some of these parameters and I said, look, some of these are excluded, others are in there. When they did the study, actually, interestingly, so that was between 2009 to 2017, they found that while the BPA, which we know now a lot of bottles are BPA free, and then they use, of course, replacements for that, um, and uh, DIBP, DNBP, and DEHP, so the ones that were banned early on in children's toys and have been decreased in some other products, while well, they decreased by about 50% from 2009 to 2017, so that's great. So they looked at the urine from 2009 and then to 2017, so there was a 50% decrease in those. Great. However, their replacement substances like DEHTP, for example, increased 20 times. So now you have another chemical that's probably just as bad. That's 20 times higher. And um, then they have DINCH, another chemical. Again, I'm not even going to pretend to you that I understand all these chemical formulas, but they're all in a group of phthalates and the other ones, the, you know, the BPA, BPS, those are called bisphenols. And they, again, uh, are endocrine disruptors. They can cause infertility. They can cause massive problems in developing babies. And that's, again, that's the one category where I really, really want people to understand that. Um, and replacing them with something that's just as bad, again, that's just advertising to me. It doesn't help us. It doesn't make us healthier in the end, right? So what is the way that we can take something positive out of it. Well, the positive thing we should understand is that no matter what the industry tells us, we're replacing this, this is BPA free. Think of it, plastics are bad. I mean, that's a simple way to say it because no matter how you slice it and look at you know, the experts talking about it and look at studies published, we don't have safe plastics. I think they want to try to say, well, we might have a safe plastic for you in contact with food or you know, that your kids can chew on. No, I think that is just not correct. And you know, as long as we know that, that's fine. This is bad for us. That's the risk. So why don't we try best we can to reduce that, I think. But we should have this understanding and then we can make decisions. So I talked in the last video about replacing um, plastic containers with glass, for example, and now Tupperware of glass. And I've, in, I've implemented that in my house. Stainless steel bottles for drinking water. I just bought a bunch of those too. I think that's very important. And those are fine. Stainless steel glass, absolutely fine. Then meat packing. When you buy meat um, in the grocery store, and you know, even if it's grass fed and all that, it always comes in plastic pouches. The problem, and I mentioned this in the other video, whenever you have something that's an oil or fat in contact with plastic, it extracts even more, it leaches in more. So remember, like dissolves like, so you have these um, petrochemical plastic products, they're made from oil, and then you have an oil inside, and they really like to dissolve each other a little bit, and they kind of leach in. So. The good news is if it's refrigerated, that process is kind of minimized and meat, of course, is refrigerated. Uh, milk, same thing, milk cartons look good on the outside, but they're lined on the inside with plastic. So I've started also to buy milk in glass bottles, but you get a small amount for the same price. It's more expensive and it's heavy. But I think I'm going to continue doing that more for my children. I'm not big on milk for myself. However, um, my kids drink milk and you know getting it in glass bottles might be a first step also when you think about the environmental impact you know glass is very easy to recycle it's a it's a great uh, way to package things and if we as consumers are preferably using those uh, packages I think the industry definitely will respond you know because the industry goes with whatever we're willing to uh, spend our money on usually right um, so for meat packaging now I looked into this um, they have this butcher paper and butcher paper, the traditional butcher paper, which is wax coated, that actually seems like it's fine. Um, that's very inert. Wax is not a problem for the meat and you can use it. However, a lot of the butcher paper that's produced now is coated with polyethylene, which is probably not that good either. So really do your research. And if you have meat you buy from the butcher, you know, fresh, that is good. And then ask them what paper they use. Um, packaging it then at home in uh, butcher paper that's wax coated might be a great idea, you know. Um, so these are things we can do to minimize our exposure. I just want to briefly bring this up. Yes, there was regulation on these um, substances, but in the end, it's all advertising. For all practical purposes, avoid plastics at all costs as best you can, because no matter what they replace one chemical with, in the end, all these chemicals are not good for us, and the more we can cut out, the better it is for our health.